welcome to the Retail Tech Podcast, where we dig in deeper into the technologies that run retail, online, in the store, and everywhere in between. We all know how important the path to purchase is in online and even offline shopping, and it relies heavily on understanding the shopper, their behavior, preferences, history, and more. But how does one become proficient in creating the best path to purchase experiences for their brands? Experience is important, but training and education are also key. That's why the Path to Purchase Leadership University has developed an industry-specific curriculum designed to make you an expert in your role. These online on-demand courses cover shopper marketing, shopper behavior and engagement, e-commerce, collaboration, insights, and more. The Path to Purchase University is the only end-to-end online and on-demand training program that builds shopper-centric knowledge and skills. So don't wait, become more shopper-centric and check out the Path to Purchase Leadership University at p2pi.org learn. That's p2pi.org learn. And now on to our interview. I'm speaking with uh, Jennifer Silverberg, uh, CEO of a company called Smart Commerce today. How are you, Jennifer? I am doing fantastic. How are you? Great. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Um, what is uh, Smart Commerce? Um, Smart Commerce, yeah, because a lot of people don't know because we're relatively new to the U.S., even though we've been in Europe for a while. Um, we help brands get close. We help brands make it easier for their consumers to buy products through whatever retail channel the consumers want to buy from. So um, in a world where we're seeing a big shift in the way that people buy and digital is becoming way more important, um, we help brands, particularly CPG brands, um, create a really, I mean, like a ridiculously short path to purchase, like put a cart next to each consumer while they're out there on the Internet so that it makes it super easy for people to act on the impulses that they're driving, um, the digital digital demand that they're driving, and act on impulse and buy products quickly. We've been um, in the U.S. now only for a little under a year, but um, in in Europe we're already working with Procter & Gamble, Unilever, Nestle, Coca-Cola, you know, Reckitt, Ben Kaiser, all the big CPG companies. So it's kind of fun to take that technology into a space that's changing really rapidly about how people are buying CPG products and really help the brands here um, react to some of the market changes that are going on. Okay. So, of course, you know, grocery is, as as you mentioned, is really changing rapidly and, you know, really driven by what consumers are carrying in their pockets these days. So um, how do you actually work and help the current customers you know like what kind of activities do you do with them or for them okay great great question and by current customers i'm going to answer that from two points of views both well actually three the brands the retailers and the consumers right so most brands have three different kinds of consumers they have consumers that don't know who they are yet they have ones who sort of know who they are and can be uh uh, inspired to buy their products. And then they have ones that are going to buy their products no matter what. So for that third group, people, if they're, if they're looking at a digital buy, those, those consumers will go online and they'll do one of two things. They'll either search, right? So they'll go search for the product and Google owns that. Sorry, but they do. Um, or they'll go straight to a retailer and there's a big fight going on over that space right now. But of course, Amazon is sort of the big gorilla there. We don't play in that game where we play is, Let's say if if a brand has 7% market share, that still leaves 93% of the people that are in those other two groups. They're sort of aware of a product or are not aware of a product, but the brand is is advertising or social media-ing, if that can be a verb, or putting together videos or whatever they're doing to reach that consumer. And the really cool thing about CPG products is – you know, you walk through, the the way that you get trial is very spur of the moment. It's very impulse oriented. So you don't think, well, very seriously, I need a new toothpaste. I really need to try a new toothpaste. I think I'll go research online and look for what toothpaste might be good. You tend to just see one that catches your eye that says this one's for sensitive teeth. And you go, oh, that's cool. I didn't even know that existed. I'm going to toss that in my cart when you're in the store. 
But with fewer people going into the store, brands sort of have this weird situation where they've got to figure out how to break into your psyche in an online world, understanding that you're probably not going to remember a week later when you actually go out to that retailer online to buy. So we literally give brands links that with a single click, very, very simply drops that product into a retailer cart online, which is how people shop anyway online. They don't, they don't have shopping, you know, they don't go shopping 1.5 times per week like you would do in a regular grocery store. They don't go up and down aisles. It's a whole new paradigm. They, people tend to, and they don't make a list. You know, you think off, on, offline, you make a shopping list, right? But online, you just toss it into the cart, and that's essentially your list. So, and, and, and when a product gets in a cart, all sorts of wonderful things start happening. The brand and the retailer can work together to remind you to buy that product, um, either for the first time if it's sitting there in your cart, or later on when you need to buy it the second time, they kind of know, you know how frequently you order toilet paper or dog food or whatever, and they can remind you on the right cadence. So that the cart kind of being the holy grail right now, we help brands bridge between all this fabulous job that their agencies are doing to drive intent and, and interest directly into a product actually getting into a cart and sold because it never gets sold if it doesn't get in a cart. Right. So that's literally what we do. And there's a lot of intelligence underneath it. In order to be able to do that, we have to know every single product that's available, every single retailer that carries it, what the price is, what the stock level is at every single retailer, the fact that every retailer calls it something a little different, even though it's the exact same product. We refer to it as our giant hairball, but it has to be like a like an organic thing that's all this interconnected web of, of data that, you know, hundreds of millions of bits of data that have to be made into something that in the moment that the consumer clicks, they never get in out of stock, they never get lost, they never get an oops, they never anything. So the product goes in the cart. Okay. Sorry. S- s- uh, sorry. I get excited. So I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. The, uh, so, um, Again, digging, digging in a little bit into what you are mentioning. Uh, yep. So your basically smart commerce is uh, is a technology that yep. is installed on top of a retailer's current um, experience, whatever it is, right? A website, uh, app, you're, or you're something. Close. Okay. You're close. You're close. It's it's a technology that links between a brand and a retailer. So our clients are all brands. We're free to retailers. We don't care what retailer cart you put product in. We want all retailers to be successful and we want consumers to be able to use whatever cart they want. We work with brands and we give them a technology to bridge between I mean, think about it this way. If you're a brand if if you if you're a person and you're putting out a a uh, notice to all your friends and you say, I'm going to have a party on Saturday. And that's all you say. You don't say where it is. You don't say when it is. You don't say anything. That's kind of what brands are doing. They're saying, here's a great product you might want. You know, okay. good luck going and finding it. Why would you do that? So our technology allows the brand to say, and here's a link to drop it in a cart now so you can get on with your life. You don't have to, if you want to come to my party, here's the link to RSVP and with all of the data. It's that. And it gives... The retailers that we work with, we it gives the retailers incoming leads or, or new sales that they wouldn't have ever reached because this consumer never went to that retailer maybe. That right. consumer never knew they wanted that product. So, so that's at, why I said it. Oh, sorry. Go right, ahead. sorry. So looking at the, a little bit more at the technology side of it. Yep. Where is your tool, your, your package or your software actually installed on, the, on whose server? It's a SaaS product, so the tool isn't actually installed. We just, I mean, we host the, the entire service. It's, it's a subscription base for a brand. Right, but it's, in, okay, so that's good. Uh, that's definitely a positive point. Uh, so, but who actually implements it into their own application? It has to be implemented in somebody's application, yep. right? Yeah, just, just a link. So if it's an ad, typically the agency will embed that link into the ad itself. If it's um, on the brand.com website, then that's typically an internal web team. Um, if it's 
uh, inside of a video that may be an agency or it may be, you know, some sort of social media team or whatever social media, of course, mm -hmm. it's the social media team that's taking it live. So, but we make it super simple. We basically like little things like, um, it, it, typically on a where to buy solution, first of all, for the consumer, you make them stop at multiple places. You take them to like the product page at the retailer and then they have to decide again, which product they want to buy and all of this nonsense. We always take it down to a single click at the most two, if the brand wants it. But, um, but basically we, we deal with out of stocks ahead of time by knowing what products are in stock and out of stock and making sure that the link only links to drop in stock products in, into um, retail carts. We know all what the brand is, is trying to sell and, and, um, and what the consumer is trying to buy. And after a time, we know where the consumer wants to cart it. So we get smarter as we keep going with a specific brand and make it easier and easier for consumers to use those links. I'm okay. not sure if I answered your question, but. Right, so I'm, I'm just, uh, so, you know, really coming, having a technology and implementation background, yep. I'm just trying oh, wow, to see yeah. how things actually work because, you know, this is like one of the challenges that I've worked with, you know, both in my current cast, you know, company and also, you know, previously is, you know, helping the retailers actually or who the, mm -hmm. whoever the customer is, brand or the retailer, implement the product as fast as possible so they can use it. So that's where my qu question. questions are trying to figure out, okay, I, I say, yes, I like this pro product. What does it take for me to actually implement it and get it used? Great question. Great question. We had a conversation with, I'm going to cover retailer and brand differently because, of course, they're different. Um, we had a conversation with a major, major retailer this morning that was going live with us. We have most of them, but there are a few that are still sitting out there. <laughs> um, I have a little wish list. But um, anyway, the one that we met, it'll, it's going to take, we need access to an existing API, and that's about it. So it's going to take us about a week to get that all set up and ready to go. And that retailer now becomes one of the retailers where, our brands, and remember, we're working with Procter and Unilever and Mars and, you know, these big companies. Um, so these brands can start carting. The other side, you get the, the CPG brand side. Um, it's a little more complicated, but typically we, we handle all of it. The brand tells us what products that they need us to be able to enable um, so that whenever they have a, an ad or a camp, any kind of campaign or on their brand.com, um, what products they want showing, and we set everything up for them. It's really simple. Right now, if I were trying to go in and, and our company were trying to sell something that required somebody internally to implement or um, somebody to set up any sort of complicated whatever, we would fail. Every company is super lean. No company has, even if it has the promise of a lot of e-commerce dollars, Nobody has a lot of resources to spare right now. So we've built this from the ground up to understand that and to focus on um, building sales without building any need for implementation or time on the brand or the retailer's part. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think everybody, every retailer and brand, pro, I mean, understands where you need to really spend your money is in engaging with the customer not implementing your technology. That's a great point. That's a great point. I mean, every minute that they spend, it's kind of like data. We have a ton of data exhaust that comes out of this, and we include it in our service. And when I first looked at what we had in, in Europe, I'll, perfectly honestly, full disclosure, we basically just vomited all this data. I mean, it was in these great charts, and it was all slice and diceable and everything. But you had to go through it to figure out what you needed to do today with it, right? It was like the pro you had a list of products, but the problem product was hidden somewhere. So one of the first things we did was recognizing exactly what you're saying. It, the brand manager's time is much better spent figuring out how to build a better product or how to communicate better, not trying to sift, you know, sift through piles and piles of data. Um, we rebuilt everything so that it only brings you the headlines. And if you want to read the, the news underneath it, you can. But if the headlines are five of your products are out of stock and have been for a week at three of the most important retailers, that's a headline that the brand manager wants to know. Telling okay. them, you know, 
10% of your products are out of stock is not useful because I don't know which they are and I don't know whether they're important and I don't know how long or where or whatever, you know? Right. So, yeah, so you make a really, really good point. Every minute that we waste of their time where they're not out getting people more interested or inspired to buy their product is time that they're wasting and, and sales that they're wasting. Right. I hadn't thought about it that way, but thank you. Right. I'm, I'm going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's like we used to do implementation projects that took years. Man. And, I mean, th that's still going on. Uh, oh, know, yeah. Unfortunately, that's still going on. But uh, I think everybody is getting smarter, it's, including the old players. They're, they're all changing. They're all understanding that the value that they provide to the customer, is, is, it can be a lot easier realized if their product mm -hmm. is being used as fast as possible. <laughs> so that's like a, it's a win-win-win situation for everybody. It's just the way old software was built was different, and that's changing. So. Well, and where that is really at play is with grocery retailers. Um, there are so many legacy systems, and because they had for so long this very stable business model and business and um, tracking, they are, uh, by and large, there are exceptions, but they are the hardest ones to get moving quickly because they kind of expect everything's going to be a six-month implementation process. And we say, no, no, all we need is <laughs> this tiny bit of data. And they don't believe we'll you when there. you say that, right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. What are you Nor not do they even me? have Come that on. concept. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Nor do they necessarily, in it, honestly, have the APIs built or anything like that. And that does make it much harder if, if they're not even into their own data in the way that's going to be required for I mean, I'd love to say next year. It's not next year. It's this year. I mean, if you want to be a player in the digital CPG space, um, and you're going to have to be if you are a CPG retailer or CPG brand, you need to be there in the next four to six months. Because if you aren't, the habits are going to become ingrained in this new version of, of how people get products. And it's going to be very, it's going to cost you 10 times, uh, no joke, 10 20 times more to break in six months from now than it will if you act quickly. Right. I, I agree. I, I, I really yeah. agree with that. It's not, um, you know, the, the, the rate of change and the rate of losing that connection is not the matter of years anymore. It's months, no. weeks yep. now. Yep. So yep. Yep. I, I totally agree with you. Now, let, let, let me just ask you about a specific application. A lot of people are advertising on Facebook, right? Yep. So Facebook has its own ad creator, ad manager. H how does your product actually work with, with that? Does the customer actually create a different ad in a different system and import nope. it to Facebook or vice versa? Or No, and I love Facebook. Frankly, if I could talk to one person, if you could get me an introduction to one person, it would be Sheryl Sandberg because we could make – her advertising worth so much more money because Facebook knows who the person is. Facebook is unusual among all the ad platforms because of their very, very deep personal knowledge of the individual who is clicking on that link. Um, there is absolutely no reason that Facebook, rather than the retailer, shouldn't be keeping track of every single thing that I cart. And then being able to retarget me based on that thing. They, there's no reason that they can't know which carts I want and for which kind of products. Facebook could use our, our data maybe better than anyone else in the world now. Uh, now that I've said that, somebody else will come along this way better. But, but anyway, I think, no. So you, you create one link or you know a link for each, however you want to track your data. It doesn't matter. But, but the link works anywhere. And the link just basically says... You know, imagine that you're doing a Facebook and what I love about Facebook is you can do, you know, an ad to 40 year old women who had their birthday within the last week who, you know, have said that they like Dove. So as an example, Dove could do an ad saying, you know, happy 40th birthday, click to stick this new over 40 product in your cart. That might be really offensive, but it's just an example. And a single click would drop that thing into, you know, your Amazon cart or your Target cart or your um, buy online, pick up in store, local Kroger cart, whatever it is you like. And, and it's, it, it's just, we need to get to the point where 
sticking a product in an online cart is as thoughtful, as easy, as frictionless as dropping something into your regular cart. And the brands that do that first are going to be the ones that the next time you go out to that retailer, those products show up first, right? Because I'm guessing you've tried Instacart or, or Shipped or, you know, right. Kroger.com or whatever. They surface the products that you bought before. So you need to get there first. Otherwise, if I already have one peanut butter that shows up, I'm really not going to go search to look at all the different peanut butters to figure out which one I buy next time. I'm just going to become habitual. The opportunity to establish your brand as a default habit has never been better than it is right now. But you've got to get your product in the retail cart to make that happen. Right. Okay. So so that's basically where the, uh, the, the specific uh, value that you're working on is – getting the product from an ad into the cart and then taking action based on what the shopper is doing after that and where they're going. It's just getting it into the cart. It okay. sounds like such an easy thing, but if I... No, it's if not I easy said, at all. Yeah. It's not easy at all. <laughs> I mean, we the advantage is because we were with Channel Intelligence, I was able to rehire this giant team of, not giant, but a really brilliant team of people that are now spread out in the U.S., so it's a kind of interesting company. But um, the this team of people that really deeply understood the difficulty level of that and didn't have to get surprised along the way. Right. So our... Our speed to market was just way, way, way faster. Plus, we had you know the the brand in Europe and everything that they had learned. But but we added quite a bit to it because of what we knew in in the U.S. And there's this whole layer of local data that's really interesting that we never had to deal with at Channel Intelligence, but we're bringing on here. Um, that's hard. That is so hard. And the few kind of sort of competitors that we have in our space keep trying to map that data, and you can't map it because it changes literally hour on hour on hour with stocks changes and pricing changes and product changes and product size changes. And, you know, you get things like Amazon and Walmart, which are essentially marketplaces. Um, Amazon is a marketplace and you get, and you get changes of who's selling it inter hour. This is in order to be able to do that, you have to have built, you would probably be fascinated with it with your background, but this organic, engine that can respond to changes on a, in using um, all sorts of language recognition and things like that, that, um, that without that, you would be constantly going back and trying to fix broken things. Right. So no, that's, I think that's, that's, that's secret sauce. That is yeah. very, very interesting. And that's where I, I really am interested in the how question. You know, mm -hmm. it's, I understand the what, the business side of it. I think it's yep, un, got it. you know, a lot easier to understand. But the how part is <laughs> where, you know, most of, and you know, really honestly, most of the people that are running the, the larger companies uh, are really not tech savvy. They didn't come up from a tech background. So we just keep throwing these benefits at them. And yep. then they get these huge bills and these big projects, and they're running on such low margins, it makes it very difficult for them. Yeah. So the how yeah. question is really what I'm interested in learning. So, well, um, one... Well, let me put it yeah. this way on that one. If I had to build our system for each brand, I could never afford to do it. But since I build my system... To, to, to service multiple brands and make that scalable. That's the only way this works. No one brand could afford to do this for themselves. But since we're doing it and applying that across multiple brands, it makes it affordable and scalable. Right. Which makes it, I mean, which also goes back to the build versus buy question. Yeah. Some people think something looks simple from the outside. But that's yeah. the art of it. The art of the product is to make it simple and the complexity is behind the scenes. And exactly. people find that out after they start. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, yeah, because this is a hard one. You, you, the, the, the line we have to walk is you're right. We have to make everything look like it. it's so simple and seamless and bam, you just click a button and and, and we do have pretty much every brand we work with at some point say, you know, I think we could do this. And we said, well, let me show you 
what we have to do to get there. This is not a link that takes you to a product page somewhere. It's it, just a is, link. Come on, how, yeah. is, how tough can it be? <laughs> how hard can that possibly be? But how do you know where the consumer is and how do you know where the product's in stock right. and how do you know? I mean, there's a million things to know. So um, this and luckily, goes, we know how to do that. Yeah, I mean, this, this another thing that I've been hearing recently is the fact that some people are saying retailers are really not retailers anymore. They're technology companies. And I don't agree with that. Okay. Retailers are not technology companies. They should not, I mean, they should know what the technology is, but mm -hmm. they should, their skill should be in picking the right tools to put together to serve their customer. And they should focus on the retail aspect, the product, the marketing, the branding, all those things. So when I when yeah. I hear this about but, like retailers yeah. or technology companies, I'm kind of like questioning that. Well, but but yeah. So just to I'm trying to pick that apart in my mind because technology companies also need to think about the consumer and their branding and and making sure that they're providing a differentiated experience, right? I mean. Uh, Airbnb has to provide a different experience than whoever their closest competitor is, and they are a technology company. Um, unless you're talking about B2B technology companies, and that's an entirely different so, thing. But so, but yeah, let, let's talk about Airbnb. Is okay. Airbnb really a technology company or a, a hotel, whatever you call it, accommodations company? What is the service that they sell to the customers? What do they make yeah, money from? They, they, yeah, they make money because they give somebody something that they could get and know. They are an experience company, I think, is what Airbnb is. And I don't think that there's any company. There's Facebook is an experience company. Well, uh, so Facebook Sears, is a little different. I, I, well, wait, let, yeah, let right. me throw this out there. Though. Let me finish the sentence because this is kind of fun for me too here. The um, Kmart at some point quit being an experience company while Target went on to be an experience company. So even re within retailers, you have some that were very intent on branding the experience. Um, Nordstrom is very much an experience company. Um, Airbnb is very much an experience company. Now you have to have a differentiated technology but you know what? I bet you somebody else would have, some other leadership team would have taken Airbnb's technology and created something that didn't work. But somebody had the, the, the intelligence to say, here's the underlying functionality we have. How do we layer on top of it an expectation? Everything's an expectation company. What is the consumer expectation from using this that I can get nowhere else? And and Airbnb is a, I am going to have a like I live local experience. I mean, basically that's what it is. Sometimes people do it because it costs less or whatever, but primarily they are a, I'm going to get to live like a local experience. And they talked about that on the Super Bowl last night, actually. Um, right. And, and is, what was another one that you asked? Facebook is definitely all of that. Um, retailers. The retailers that are going to stay around, somebody, another, um, somebody who interviewed me asked about what's the difference between the retailers that aren't going to make it through this change and the retailers that are going to make it through this change. And they were talking specifically about brick and mortar. And I said, I, I think brick and mortar still has its place, but you can't just stock the product. You have to build an experience that makes me want to go in. So Costco has managed to do that, even though they are a warehouse, go figure. It's so weird, isn't it? But they've somehow they're so good at creating that sense of discovery that it makes you want to go into the store. Whereas most grocery stores haven't quite turned that corner yet. A few have. Fresh Market's one, right? Um, there are some really interesting ones, some local ones, Whole Foods for sure. Um, but I think the same thing is going to apply online. And otherwise, you just become a fulfillment mechanism. And right. so, so... Retailers have a choice. They can either be, I forget what you called it, a consumer company or whatever. Technology or they company, can, right. Well, techno they can be a technology company if all they're going to do is fulfill an order. And then I really don't freaking care whether I get it from Amazon or Walmart or, right. you know, wherever. I don't care. It's just, you know, I, just like I don't care if I get it from FedEx or UPS. Have you ever cared whether you get something delivered via FedEx, UPS? You don't care. No. Um, yeah. 
so so unless the retailer on the other end and and thrive is one that sort of managed to stand out as a um as a different sort of retailer i think instacart and ships some of the aggregators have managed to stand out as an experience company and something more than a technology company even though all they are underneath is technology so sorry, that's a, such a great yeah. question. God, I'm gonna get to play with that one. Well, it, I mean, it, I think that's you. You nailed it. It's it's the experience, and the experience is a lot more difficult to replicate by comp competition than the technology. Yep. Yes, technology. Yep. There may be some newer aspect to it now, but next year they'll catch up with you. But the experience exactly. is the difference. Like you know, and and definitely in grocery, like you know, where I I try to. You know, in, in Southern California, you know, there, there are specific stores that I just go there because they have the products that I value, the products, mm -hmm. you know, that I go mm -hmm. to. Like Whole Foods is one of them. Mother's Market yep. is another one, which is like mm -hmm. really good. And, you know, I mean, Sprouts is doing a really good job. So, yeah, yeah. So these are th these are all experiences. Yep. So yep. I, I definitely agree. And, you know, that's, you know, this probably for a, this, another discussion, but that's where the Amazon Go store is, mm -hmm. to me, is, is a great concept, but the experience is really different. It's just a completely different experience. And that's the question is, is that experience enough to pull the shoppers actually into the store rather than just pulling up the Amazon app and ordering item? Yeah, I mean, I don't... Get, it, it, they must have done some sort of market research or something where people said the thing they hate about shopping is is checkout. Um, but I, I sort of, I, that's a weird one for me because people are standing there on their phone and everything. It really doesn't take that long anymore, and I, and I don't know. But I, I would argue, I mean, I would, and I hate to say it's interesting anything to against see. Amazon, but <laughs> almost like you have to create something cooler before that in order for that to be enough to make me go there more than once i'll go once or twice because it's cool and different but after that i'm just going to have amazon bring it to me that's what amazon amazon to me is it comes to me so i really don't understand an amazon where i'm supposed to go to it does well, that make that's sense? the genius of amazon is they yeah. are thinking about so many different things that we're not yeah. probably thinking about in how Good to point. even take advantage of this experience this this touch it's another touch point for them right to the customer yeah 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 so i'm sure yeah. they've they've got a plan and you know the other thing is that they're not afraid to fail they're not afraid to try something and see how it goes yeah they have they 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 have plenty of money to to make some so. errors and to play around and and here's where i do agree with them we have no freaking idea right now where this is going to land in terms of how people are going to get products to their home particularly CPG. I mean, it, all bets are off. Who knows? I mean, is it the Internet of Things? It's just going to reorder something when you don't put it back in your fridge? Probably. Is, you know, it, but that's only things you've already bought, so that's not going to get you the things you haven't seen yet. What's the paradigm that's going to emerge? The, the, the bet I'm placing and my investors are placing um, is that whatever that paradigm is, you're going to need the links between the products and the retailers to power it. So that's why we put all of our focus on building that set of links. Um, but I have no idea where it's going to wind up. And I guess it is fun to see Amazon experimenting. There's something um, – I saw another uh, concept store the other day. I don't want to say who it's from because I, I thought it was a little weird. But it was like an online um, video game shopping. Like you went through a grocery store on a video game. I, I really don't understand why you would do that. Because stores are set up for the retailer's benefit, right? They put the milk in the back. So do right. I? Why on the video game do I want to trot down the little thing and go get the milk in the back? I, I don't know, but um, but you know, I don't. What do I that's know? Maybe that's the next greatest thing once you get artificial uh, VR, virtual reality. Sorry, and or do you just get artificial intelligence and you tell it I want to weigh 140 pounds? So just start bringing me the food that'll get me to weigh 140 pounds. I don't know. Um, well, we have to get off the couch for doing that, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great point. The more stuff we have brought to us, the worse the that problem becomes. But, right. but yeah, I mean, why not? Why not say, you know, my target weight is whatever. How about just send me the groceries that get me there? Yeah, um, that's a, that's an interesting idea. Yeah. 
It just I give me know. the goal and you figure out how I can reach that goal. Yeah, yeah. And I have four people in my house, so just send me the toilet paper and you know, shampoo and all. And you, two of us have dry hair and one of us has oily hair and the other is normal. Just send me everything I need. Do we want autopilot? I don't know. Or is part of part of our joy of life finding new things and trying to come up with something new? I don't know. It's Probably a hybrid. At the Probably end a of, hybrid. Right. You're right. If we survive, actually, and the machines don't kill us all. but. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. You've been watching too many movies. I think we'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, this is a fascinating discussion. Thank you so much, Jennifer. It was great to talk to you. And, you know, I, I think what the Smart Commerce is doing is very interesting. Thank you. And I, I hope we can talk again in a year or two and we'll have really penetrated the U.S. market. So thank you for helping us with that. Awesome. Have a great day. All right. Thank you. You thank too. Bye-bye.